studies in animals and humans show that that is a potent way to increase memory for what you were just exposed to. I'd like to touch on a little bit more of the use of caffeine for enhancing mental performance. Yes, it is the case that ingesting one to three milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of body weight in the 30 minutes or so prior to doing a memory task or um, sitting down to doing some studying or learning of any kind, physical or mental performance of any kind, is beneficial for all the reasons we talked about before related to dopamine and acetylcholine, etc. But it turns out that it is also the case that spiking one's adrenaline and other so-called catecholamines, so this would be dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine, after a bout of learning can greatly enhance memory for the information that one was trying to learn. That's right. Spiking your adrenaline after learning can greatly increase memory for the material you're trying to learn. In fact, this is a practice that dates back centuries and was written about in a beautiful annual review of neuroscience on the biology of memory by James McGaw, where he talks about medieval practices of children being taught information and then being thrown literally into cold water to stimulate the release of adrenaline and that increase in, in adrenaline, while the mechanism wasn't completely understood, it was understood that that sort of shock to the system from the cold water led to better memory and retention of the information that these children had been exposed to. And it turns out the exact same thing is true for adults in the laboratory or kids in a laboratory. And here I'm not suggesting throwing anyone into cold water. If you want to get into cold water, now there's a reason we call it deliberate cold exposure on the podcast is that it should be deliberate and controlled by you, not by somebody else. And if it's controlled by somebody else, that might be uh, you know military uh, screening or something. But here we're talking about deliberately increasing your levels of adrenaline and other catecholamines, dopamine, norepinephrine, et cetera. You can do that certainly by deliberate cold exposure with a cold shower or getting in up to your neck in cold water of any kind. But the other way to do that is to spike your adrenaline by ingesting a one to three milligrams per kilogram of caffeine after sitting down to try and learn some material. Now, I confess that more often than not, I use caffeine the same way that most people use it, which is, okay, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna research information for a podcast or assemble um, some information for a paper or grant, and I want to focus, so I will drink a cup of coffee at the beginning of that and maybe even throughout that, or a cup of yerba mate at the beginning or throughout that, or I'll sip on one or both throughout trying to learn. And that works quite well, in terms of maintaining focus and alertness and retention of information. But it is indeed the case, that is the research supports the fact, and I've experienced the fact that if I abstain from caffeine while I'm trying to learn something, but then I drink caffeine immediately after, somewhat surprisingly to me, but certainly in a way that's consistent with the research literature, memory for the information that I was focused on prior to ingesting that caffeine is much greater. And here I'm talking about it as a personal anecdote, but this is actually what the data point to both in animals and in humans. And if you think about it, it makes perfect sense because the way that the memory systems of the brain are organized is that we go through life experiencing things, we encounter surprises, both good and bad. We go through the motions of things, both typical, mundane, exciting, and, and novel and not novel. And then every once in a while, something will happen that will spike our catecholamines. And without fail, increases in the catecholamines tend to lock in memories for things that preceded the increase in those catecholamines. Again, the catecholamines being dopamine, epinephrine, and norepinephrine. Sometimes all three in combination, sometimes just two of those, sometimes just one of those, depending on the experience. So it makes perfect sense that using caffeine at the end of a learning bout would enhance our memory for the information that we're trying to learn. So if you decide that you want to try and um, extract this performance enhancing effect of caffeine, what I recommend would be to try and abstain from caffeine for a day or two prior. But if you can't, to just continue with your normal caffeine intake. But then when you sit down to study or learn something, to not ingest any caffeine as you do that, but then afterward to ingest caffeine. Now, in theory, you could probably further enhance the memory encoding effects of adrenaline and the other catecholamines by drinking caffeine and then 
taking a cold shower, doing deliberate cold exposure if you really wanted to or had the ability to, or doing some sort of intense form of exercise. And we'll talk in a moment about how caffeine exercise and the adrenaline system interact. But as a brief but relevant aside, brief bouts of intense exercise ranging from 10 to 50 minutes or so have been shown to improve memory for information that one was trying to learn prior to the intense exercise. This is work from Dr. Wendy Suzuki's lab at NYU, as well as other laboratories. Some of the work that's being done at Stanford and the mind-body laboratories and our laboratory points in the direction of these kinds of effects as well. They all come back to the same general neurochemical theme, which is that when we experience an increase in these catecholamines that include adrenaline, dopamine, and norepinephrine, the memory systems of the brain flip on in a way that try to capture the information and the perceptions and the experiences that we were exposed to just prior to the increase in catecholamines. And caffeine, but also exercise and also cold water, and of course, any of those alone or in combination, all increase the levels of catecholamines. So it makes perfect logical mechanistic sense as to why this would work. And in fact, it does work. If you want to remember specific information, you might consider using caffeine as you move through and absorb and are exposed to that information, but you might also consider using caffeine after being exposed to that information because studies in animals and humans show that that is a potent way to increase memory for what you were just exposed to. 